Well, Dan, here we are again, and it's time to reflect on what happened last week. I'm sure that you're able to speak on all of the people in saying it was a magnificent test. Your thoughts? Yes, thank you, Mark. It was a wonderful test match. I mean, uh, end of the seat stuff. Uh, I've never, I can't remember when last I was so excited and so tense at an end of the game. But first of all, uh, you know, I have a confession to make, and I said that I thought the All Blacks would improve and, and beat us quite well, uh, which they didn't, and I have never been happier to be wrong than on that <laughs> test match, you know. It was an epic game, uh, wonderful pride uh, displayed by the players, wonderful determination, you know, especially when you think of what they've been through. The, you know, they've been in lockdown since uh, the 2nd of June, they've played the British Lions, they've been overseas to... Uh, all this time, always in lockdown, always in the bubble. There's also the one foot on the plane syndrome, which is real in rugby. You know, they must have been longing just to get home. And then they were able to dig deep, delve into their innermost soul and produce a game like that. You know, um, they could have been leading very well and then they were trailing. And somehow in that second half, they found a way uh, to beat the All Blacks. Uh, and we tend to be the one country that uh, can knock the All Blacks out of their stride. So what I really enjoyed is that we showed that we can run the ball. Uh, I liked the way uh, Faf de Clare took the ball away from the scrum occasionally, uh, broke away. Uh, uh, Pollard uh, took the ball up. Uh, there was a wonderful pass from Lukanya Um. Uh, Elton Yankees came on and held the ball beautifully uh, to put my pimpy in. So we, do, we can run the ball. So I think and I hope that we never again sink to that real low of just kicking the ball all the time and giving away possession. Uh, because I think, as, we, as I predicted, that the All Blacks wouldn't see it coming. They, they wouldn't expect us to do that. Then, of course, there was uh, outstanding performances by every forward on the field, you know, whether it was the guys who started or the guys who came on. Uh, our, our forwards were magnificent, and we really rattled the All Blacks. Uh, I thought Franz Steyn made an incredible impression when he came on. It made a big difference. And what a fine player and how passionate he is. And also Elton Yankees. Uh, his uh, cameo was very, very good. He kicked the drop. I know there was a penalty coming, but there was no guarantee that the penalty would go over. His uh, role in the try was fabulous. And then he kicked the last penalty. Um, and so as we get to the All Blacks winning and losing and uh, a, a little doff of the hat to uh, Matthew Carley, the referee, for giving that last penalty, because there are referees that might not have given it, that might have said they can't give a point blank penalty to decide a test match like that. But he did. He made uh, some other errors, I thought. You know, I thought that when uh, the scrum off scored, that Moody had actually knocked on in front of the line out. But he gave the key penalty. Now, I don't want to be a killjoy, but uh, we mustn't celebrate it as, as though we won the World Cup again. It was very narrow, it, w it went to a penalty right after the whistle. Uh, which might not have been given and we made a very bad error just before that uh, we uh, Elton didn't get the ball in 10 meters uh, and then the All Blacks fortunately uh, didn't scrum properly in, uh, because they could have just killed the game so we must still have our feet on the ground you know it was a it was a wonderful victory a victory to celebrate but it was a very narrow victory um, and now the next thing here we go again you know it hasn't stopped yet so what I hoped is that Jacques Ninaba would have said to those boys of ours when they're on their way home to South Africa, go home for two weeks, don't even jog, just rest mm -hmm. and have a nice restful time before we now move on to play Wales, Scotland and England, another tough tour. And what I'd like to see there is I think the time has come for the Springboks to make a few changes, to introduce mm -hmm. some new faces. Uh, we've got a number of players are now beyond 30, uh, you know, and key player like Duane Vermeulen, you know, how long is he still going to be around? So I think this is an opportunity um, to, to show us some, to give some other guys a chance and maybe bring in one or two new players. Uh, it's just a tour. Uh, there's a lot of rugby and I think it's a chance to, to now go uh, to Wales, Scotland, England and freewheel, just have some fun. And um, to me, it's not like the All Blacks or the Wallabies or the British Lions. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if, um, if we don't win, uh, as long as we go and find a new way of playing, a better way of playing, and we inculcate the next generation for the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Thanks so much, Dan. You bring so much sparkle to the game. Bye-bye.